Hey there, Touch Programmers. So, Matthew here. Um, what I wanted to look at today is just kind of quickly cover uh, a question that I got via email about working with MIDI. I know that some of you work with Touch OSE a whole lot, and some folks are really excited about working with MIDI and get kind of frustrated with some of the uh, confusing aspects of getting that particular part of Touch Designer to work the way that you might expect that it's going to. So what we're going to aim for is we're going to build a real simple little network uh, that looks a little bit something like this in the end. Uh, and what that's going to get us is it's going to make sure that we have a interface where our sliders here, right, um, have got a consistent naming schema. So we can see that, you know, slider one over here is slider one here in Touch Designer and slider 9 is 9. We also want to make sure that our buttons work. We can see here that I want our buttons to have a consistent input signal. And then it figures also worth looking at how we can send control messages back out to our MIDI um, device so we can actually change their color. So for example, here we've got some nice simple kind of flashing animation. And that's one of the things that we're going to be kind of uh, working towards getting set up. So that's where we're headed. That's what we're going to build. I know that's like not particularly kind of sexy and exciting, um, but it is going to be very helpful if you're ever thinking about working with MIDI uh, and what that looks like. All right, so let's pull apart what's going on here just a little bit. All right, so let's get started. I'm going to start with an empty network here. I'm going to go ahead and delete all of this stuff in there to get started. I'm going to close the palette browser just to give myself a little bit more room to work. And working with MIDI, we kind of have to think about two particular chops that are going to be the mainstay of what we kind of look at. We've got the MIDI in uh, chop, and then we also have a MIDI in map. Those are our two kinds of pieces of the puzzle that we get to work with here a fair bit. Um, and we can see that, you know, lo and behold, just a minute ago, we were able to kind of turn sliders and knobs, and this thing was working the way that we expected it to. And now it seems like nothing is working at all. Well, there are a few things that we've got to kind of do to get this set up correctly, as in all things Touch Designer. Um, so what we want to do is we want to head to the Dialogs box, and we're going to go ahead and grab the MIDI Device Mapper. And this is going to be our kind of best friend here as we get started, um, because we're going to need to kind of negotiate a few different things and figure out where a few settings live. Uh, and this particular little dialog box is going to help us with a bunch of that kind of rigmarole. Just so to get started here, we can see that there are no devices that show up, right? It seems like nothing is going on here. Um, so we could, you know, check for MIDI devices. That doesn't seem to do anything. So what gives? Well, what we haven't done is we haven't actually created any kind of mapping between a connected device and touch designer. So we first have to hit this create new mapping button and then from our drop down for our input device, now we have to locate the device that's actually connected to us. So launch control happens to be the name of this particular device <coughs> that we're working with here today. That's launch control. So we're going to go ahead and grab that for the input device. Now it so happens that I'm going to use that also for the output device. That's what I want to do. And then we'll, we can see that there are some existing maps that have already been made. And we're going to leave that as none for just a moment because we'll come back to that. But now we should see that when we turn these knobs, uh, we not only get to see kind of messages flowing in here, but we also see something showing up here in our MIDI in chop. So that's looking pretty slick so far. Now the next ingredient for us here to kind of think about is how do we make sure that these crazy names uh, correspond in some meaningful way to uh, how we want to map things here inside of Touch Designer. So for that we actually head over here to this Devices tab on our MIDI mapper. And what we're going to do is because our device doesn't exist in this list already, if your device happens to list, exist in that list, then uh, you've kind of won the lottery here. Uh, you've saved yourself a bunch of kind of time and frustration. So you don't have to worry about what that's, uh, this next process is going to look like. If you're working with a device that isn't in that existing list, what you're going to do is you're going to hit Add Device. You'll head down to your new device map. And I'm just going to go ahead and call this Launch Control, since that happens to be the same name as my input device. Now, we're going to go back to our device mappings page. 
For our MIDI map, we're going to go ahead and make sure that we select our newly created launch control. And now we've got a uh, kind of mapping here that indicates our input device, the device that we want to send MIDI uh, messages out from, as well as the MIDI map that we want to use. You'll see that our MIDI in map here is populated already. Uh, and we're going to take a closer look at that here in just one second. Um, but that's handy because it means it's populated with a map for us to work with. So we're already kind of like off and running it here at the races, but there's a little bit more that we got to do to make sure this all works right. So let's head back to the devices page uh, and let's take a look at what's going on here a little bit. I'm going to clear my console log uh, for just a moment and what we're going to do is we're going to rely on that console log to help us figure out how we can map things here for our MIDI in map. A MIDI in map is a, a consistent naming schema that will persist from iteration to iteration or from restart to restart in Touch Designer to ensure that we actually have some consistent naming that works uh, with how we're kind of operating. Uh, and that might seem like it's not particularly sexy, but it is really handy, especially if you want to kind of create a, uh, a control interface that's consistent every time you kind of start up your project or start up your live set or whatever it happens to you or whatever you happen to be doing. So, you know, what's going on here exactly? So, to understand kind of the nuts and bolts of this, we need to look at a few things. So, one of the things to keep in mind is how this MIDI device is working. So, our MIDI device is working, and we might be able to see this better if we use a MIDI in DAT, is that we have a message type, we have a channel that comes in on, uh, we might have an index, or in some cases that might be a note, right? Um, and these things help us figure out where on earth or you know what these things correspond to. MIDI values tend to be in the range of zero here at the bottom up to 127. Um, we'll most likely see those. Now so this you know our chops here kind of do a little bit of um, filtering for us so that we've got a kind of more consistent um, well it depends right the median chop is going to make sure that we've got a normalized value that comes in, or excuse me, our median map will give us a normalized value, whereas our median, uh, just raw MIDI information chop is going to give us that 0 to 127 value. So, you know, there's a bunch of kind of stuff there that's uh, a little bit of a brain buster to think about, but that's okay. We're, we're going to sort all this out. So let's do our first pass here. Uh, at getting just like slider one kind of correctly configured. So we'll see here on our map that we've got a correspondence between S1 and then a message here that's actually what's in the second box. Um, and that's going to help us kind of get all this stuff ironed out. So to get started here, I'm just going to clear this log. I'm going to give this first knob a twist. And what I'm looking for, we'll see that the message, right, our first two pairings are the same, and it's only that last pairing that changes as our knob runs from 0 to 1 or from 0 to 127, depending on how we want to think about that. So what we can do is we can sort this out here in our mapping by making sure that B7, 15, right, so B7, Fifteen dash dash, and in this case, this dash dash means that uh, these last two digits or these last two placeholders aren't going to be taken into account. Right, we're just looking for anything that's got these four values that exist at the front part of the message, and that's going to be what slider one represents. Okay, so we'll have to come back to our map. We might have to do like a little disable enable to make sure that it updates. But now we can see that we've built in a nice little handy correspondence from our first input here, our actual knob, to a slider input here. So that's the first step in all this. The next thing that we get to do, right, is we are going to go through, we'll get rid of all of our existing sliders. And now our task is really just to go through one at a time 
and figure out what the addresses are for our knobs, right? So our next one here is B716 dash dash. That's great. Oh, and I need to add a channel. B716 dash dash. Great. And that should make sure that we're updated there. Let's give it a look. We'll give it a little twist here, a twist here. Sure enough, now we've got both of these sliders coming in. The same exists for buttons, right? So let's take a look at how a button works real fast. I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of a bunch of these channels since we're not going to need them. And for a button, the difference that we're going to have here is we get both an on message, right, which is what happens when we push our button down, note on, and then we get a note off message when we release the button. So when we add a channel here for buttons, we need to both describe what the message is re that's received um, is for the note on and for the note off. So let's go ahead and put in here, we've got 97097F. And then for our off message, we've got 870900. All right, that looks pretty good there so far. And sure enough, here in our map now, we've got an on off message for our button. So the real task then becomes the kind of slow process of going through and finding how, how all these sliders are mapped in terms of their naming uh, in a way that makes sense. Now, you know, before we kind of like lose ourselves in this process, which can be a little bit uh, uh, tedious, is probably a nice way of saying it. Um, let's take a moment and just look at what's actually going on here under the hood a little bit.